Children of Earth, I am Mantor, one of a new race, a sector from the planet Symbion. Welcome to your sector's read-along book. As you read my story, you will understand how important my message is. You are my witness, children. To you, I swear the truth. This story will show you the necessity of quick action when the unexpected happens. Every time you hear this sound, it means it's time to turn the page in your storybook. Now we are ready to begin the story, The Lost Hives of Symbion. Don't forget to turn the page every time you hear the sound. Here on Symbion, we have learned to expect the unexpected. We live in a world haunted by ghosts of our ancestors, the ancients. Long ago, the ancients tried to create a perfect race and a perfect world. Such foolish pride. Their misguided experiments led to the great cataclysm when the oceans boiled and the earth trembled with earthquakes and fires. The ancients did realize that the end was near, so they sealed the secrets of their learning and science in hidden biocontrol centers we call hives. The ancients were destroyed in the cataclysm, and the hives remained hidden and silent. But that was long ago, a long time ago. Centuries have passed. We have evolved into a race of humanoids and insectoids, and most of the hives have been lost beneath the planet's surface, under the thick jungle vegetation, barren sands, or craggy mountains that cover our planet. Now, when a hive is discovered, it is a cause for great concern. For we warriors of Symbion are a race divided. Two major kingdoms split the planet into good and evil. My kingdom, the Shining Realm, is ruled by King Marco the Mighty, while the Dark Domain is ruled by the evil Empress Devora. Come with me now, as together we relive a mysterious adventure in our history. Mark the tale well and take heed. There is much to learn. Our planets are alike in many ways. What happened to us could happen to you. Listen well, children of Earth. Prince Dargon, son of King Marco, entered the Red Claw Tavern to be greeted by his close friend, Zack. Look, everyone, it's Dargon. Sit down and have a drink, friend. We have much to discuss. Thank you, Zack. It has been a rough day. The lessons of Mantor, my tutor, grow more difficult. And with my father, King Marco, lost on a mission, and my uncle, Galkin, ruling the realm, I have many burdens. Galkin is a good warrior, but I feel he is not a strong leader. Someday your father will be found, Dargon. We are all trying to solve the mystery of his disappearance. Personally, I suspect that Empress Devora is behind it all. It would be her style, kidnapping an old sectar. Oh, how I miss him. If only I had been there to... Enough serious talk, friend. Lift your glass with me now and drink a nectar toast to brighter, more carefree days. And to my father's return. At that moment, I, Mantor, entered the tavern. Most of the talking ceased as the sectors noticed me. This tavern was an unusual place for the chief counselor to the king and tutor to the prince. Zack spoke first. Greetings, Mantor. I hope you're here to lift a glass of nectar with us. But why should today be any different? You must have more tasks for your pupil, Dargon. Ah, Mantor, there's more to life. I cut Zack short with a look. You can have enough fun for two sectors, Zack, or more. But Dargon has princely duties waiting. What is it, Mantor? You look worried, Dargon exclaimed. He's always worried, Zack muttered. I will let your uncle Galkin tell you, Dargon, but it is serious, very serious. Dargon returned to Simbator, the royal palace at the center of the Shining Realm, and immediately went before Galkin. Why have you sent for me, Uncle? 
Haven't I earned an evening of fun with my friends? Before I explain anything to you, Dargon, I think you should look in the cage behind that curtain. <gasps> By the ancients! What a beast lies in this cage! I've never seen a wild insectoid so huge! How did it reach such an unbelievable size? That, nephew, is a mystery. This creature was captured by our frontier guards near the city of the ancients. And we suspect that this wild insectoid may have burrowed accidentally into one of the lost hives of the ancients and found chemicals once used by their scientists. These chemicals are probably responsible for the beast's amazing growth. If this is so, then time is short, Hagen warned his uncle. The city of the ancients is not far from the border of the Dark Domain. If Empress Devora or General Spydrax, her evil warlord, were to find this hive and use the chemicals, we would soon be fighting a race of giants, and all Symbion would be lost. You're right, Darlon. That is why I have sent for you. You must search until you find the hive, and you must do it quickly. I fear that Devora and Spydrax may have found other giant insectoids, and will be hunting for the hive too. There is not a moment to waste. So. Leaving Zack and Pinsaw behind to guard the city, Dargon began his journey. Gulkan was right, for at that very moment in the Dark Domain, Empress Devora was questioning Spydrax, general of all her mighty armies. Spydrax, have you any word from my learned scientists about that revolting, oversized insectoid brought to me yesterday? Sadly, no, great Empress. As devoted as your scientists are to you, as we all are to you, we had still... Spare me your arachnid flattery, Spydrax. There is a real mystery here, one that must be reasoned out. Don't make the mistake of relying on the power of your whip over the power of your mind. My fighting serves you well, Devora. Well, but not well enough. Fighting is not going to win the race in solving the mystery of that insectoid's strange growth. If this has something to do with the hives of the ancients, then Dargon will be as interested as we are. Find Dargon, Spybox, and we will be close to unraveling this mystery. I am sure I am right. And you usually are, Empress. More sticky word from your sticky tongue. Take a regiment of skull soldiers and search for Dargon. Since you found the huge wild insectoid near the city of the ancients, you should start your search there. Don't you agree? As you wish, Devora. And by the way, Spyflex. Yes, your greatness. Failing to find Dargon or the reason for this mystery would amount to treason. Don't you agree? I take my leave, Devora. As any sector knows, the hives are the biocontrol centers where the ancients carried out their experiments. For a long time, these experiments were great successes. But just before the great cataclysm, they got out of control. And this is exactly what had happened at the hive which Dargon and Spydrax were racing to find. A simple lab test to increase the ancients' food supply went wildly wrong creating a growth chemical stronger than any ever known before on Symbion. Wild insectoids had burrowed near this hive. They did not get into the hive, but they did come across an air vent near the hive's upper surface, and the growth chemical came wafting through the vent. One whiff, such as the wild insectoids took, caused them to grow ten times bigger than their normal size. If they had swallowed one drop, they would have grown to 100 times their normal size. This powerful chemical had to be kept from Spydrax, and only Dargon could do it. Seated on the broad, furry back of his insectoid steed Dragonflyer, Dargon soared at incredible speed over the rugged landscape of the Desert of Lost Hope toward the City of the Ancients. The prince had no need to shout commands to Dragonflyer, for they were telebonded together. Their messages passed to each other through their thoughts. At times like this, the two thought and acted almost as one. 
Prince Dargon sent a telebonded message to Dragonfly. Esther, my friend, we must arrive first. Suddenly, through a break in the blue misty clouds, Dargon spotted his goal. It was a sandy hillside swarming with giant insectoids. At the bottom of the hillside was the long hidden entrance to the hive. The recent windstorms must have blown away the sand that was covering the entrance, thought Dargon. There, lurking by the entrance, waited Gnaw and Vipex, the two hive monsters that guarded the ancient structure. When Dargon saw them, he exclaimed, The hive monsters! I'll have to get past them if I'm to enter the hive. Mantor has told me that once I'm inside, Noir and Vipex will be loyal to me. Could these wild insectoids have burrowed their way inside the hive and found some strange chemical that caused them to grow so large? Down, Dragonfly! After landing and hiding a safe distance away from the hive, Dargon began to plan his next move. But unfortunately, he had little time to think for he heard a thunderous whirring of giant wings as he saw a shadow race across the desert floor. Looking up, Dargon cried, It's Spydrax and Spiderflyer! Seconds after Dargon spotted Spydrax, the general flew over the prince's hiding place and sighted him. Snarling with rage and revealing his hideous white fangs, Spydrax exclaimed, So, Dargon got here first, did he? First to arrive, last to leave. The desert shall be his grave. Sensing his master's rage, Spiderflyer banked sharply to the right, and Spydrax guided him downward at an ever-increasing speed. Down, Spiderflyer! It would be a battle to the death. Seeing Spiderflyer's dive, Dargon realized there was little time left to act. Looking around him on the desert-like ground, Dargon got an idea. The sap from that thorny cactus over there is super sticky. Perhaps it will be strong enough to trap Spiderflyer when he lands. That could give me the edge in battle. Dargon quickly sliced open the giant cactus and spread the sap on top of a nearby flat boulder where he was sure Spidrax would land. That should be strong enough to hold him, thought Dargon. Dragonflyer seemed to agree as he nodded his huge head. The two then returned to their hiding place just as Spydrax and Spiderflyer landed. With a flurry of sand, Spydrax and Spiderflyer landed right on the boulder without noticing its sticky surface. Because of his great weight, Spiderflyer soon sank claw deep into the sap. The sap was drying in the sun and growing hard now making escape from it more difficult. The moment Spydrax and Spiderflyer realized what had happened, they exploded with fury. Spiderflyer struggled to break free. Spydrax telebonded furiously to Spiderflyer. Up, you beast, up! But his steed remained stuck to the rock. Then, with incredible skill, Spydrax jumped from his steed and landed with a thud in the sand beside the boulder. He looked wildly about and saw Dargon, who was grinning with pleasure. Why don't you stick around, Spydrax? The party's just beginning. Spydrax's response came in the form of a low growl. He cracked his venom tipped whip over his head and strode toward Dargon, ready to do battle. Dargon, too, was ready. My sword and Vin gun are all the weapons I need to bring you down, Spydrax. Big words from such a little insect. Even without Spiderflyer, I shall crush you underfoot like the roach you are. Your threats don't frighten me, Spydrax. I am a sector of action, not boasts. Just as the two enemies were ready to fight, the ground beneath them began to rumble. Sensing danger, Gnaw and Vitex roared and hurried away to protect the hive. Dargon realized what was happening. The giant insectoids have weakened the entire area with their tunneling, and now the whole hive is collapsing. With a thunderous roar, tons of sand were sucked underground as the desert floor caved in. The shockwaves broke apart the dried sap which had been holding Spiderfire prisoner. In a split second, 
both Dargon and Spydrax jumped on the backs of their mighty insectoid steeds and raced skyward as the desert floor shuddered again. A few seconds later, both warriors looked down from high overhead and saw an amazing sight. The hive and the giant insectoids were being swallowed up by the desert sand. Within minutes, the secrets of the ancients were safely buried again under thousands of feet of sand, while Nor and Vitrex were nowhere to be found. As the desert floor collapsed, the air above it was sucked downward, causing a huge cyclone to be born. The high wind sent Dargon and Spydrax whirling dangerously about in the storm. Spydrax shouted to his enemy. What a pity this air storm makes a fight between us impossible. It would give me such pleasure to watch you and your overgrown housefly tumble to the desert floor. We'll meet again, Spydrax, and I'll be ready for you. It's just a matter of time. Up, Dragonfly! Away from this cyclone! Take me home! Later, back at the Red Claw Tavern, Zack was toasting his friend Dargon. To another great victory for Prince Dargon, heroic warrior of the Shining Realm. In all fairness, Zack, it was the giant insectoids who brought this battle to an end. The unexpected avalanche sent both Spydrax and myself to the skies. And that unexpected cyclone set us both on our way home. Let's hope those insectoids are buried forever under the desert sands and that the secrets of the ancients never fall into our enemy's hands. There will be many more battles to fight before we finally bring the light of justice to shine in the dark domain. We must all be brave. We must always be ready. For we are sectors, warriors of Symbion.